starting a new quilt. This is going to be the Gaggle of Geese quilt. And I have chosen 16 fat quarters that I want to use for this quilt. These are just the leftovers. I have decided to take out all of the super light colors just because my background is so dark that I don't want to have that much contrast in these like random spaces because I think this is going to give a more um, scrappy look. So I'm, a, I'm it's just too stark. I'm going to take those out. I'm gonna take these, these are fat quarters. This was really meant to be used with five inch blocks but I'm making do with what I have. So I'm gonna take these, iron them out and cut them into five inch squares. I have cut up all of my fat quarters into five inch squares. I've also cut some background squares here. Then we've got these little guys and then we have these. And from here we should, are gonna get a beautiful flying geese block. Let me show you how that's all gonna come together. In this stack, I have nine background, I got, well, nine print squares, and then I have 10 background squares. So, yes, that's a thing. Now I'm going to take one of the print squares and one, two of the background squares from the stack, and then I'm going to put the rest of them to the side. I'm going to show you guys how to make this whole block all the way through. Now we have an option. We can put them all together or you can cut them one at a time. I'm just going to put them all together like this. I changed my mind just because my stuff has been incredibly slippery lately and so I don't want to mess this up. Especially as we are working on it on camera. So I'm going to cut each one of these in half, horizontally and vertically. I'm just using a rotating spinning mat. This is a two and a half inch ruler here, which makes it really nice. And if I can lay it down right, then I've got action. Now I have four squares. I need to do that with these background ones too. Now that we have all of our background squares, we are going to take each one of these background squares and draw a diagonal line from tip to tip. I am using a sew line pen, one of my favorites. Uh, and it's not, you can see it very clearly on this dark fabric. So you're going to draw a line diagonally. Now I'm going to take a background square and I'm going to lay this on top of it just like this and I'm going to sew down that line that I've just drawn. Now that I have sewn directly on that line, I'm just going to cut these apart since I chain stitched them. Then I'm going to grab a ruler and I'm going to lay this quarter inch mark right here on this line. And I'm going to cut away everything over here. Do the same thing again. Put it here. I'm going to lay this on the line. And I'm cutting away a quarter of an inch of everything. Those are now scraps for somebody. Now that we've cut them apart, we have four triangles here. And we are going to press this with the dark side up and then we will open it and press that. Ooh, that's hot. Do that with all of them. Now notice that we've got the dark one on the top and the bright one, the print down here on the bottom. I'm going to take this square which has a diagonal this way and I'm just going to turn it this way 
So that way, that line is running in the opposite direction of this one or perpendicular to the other one. So we're going to do that, and instead of sewing on that line, I'm going to sew a quarter inch on either side of this line. Now that these have all been sewn on either side of the line, now I'm going to cut them on the line. We are going to cut right down the middle. And now we have yielded two more triangles. Now you need to take all your triangles and we are going to press them toward the big triangle. So big triangle goes facing up. And we just face them that way and hopefully we get this right. I did not. There we go. There we go. Ooh, that's hot. Hot, hot, hot. That's what we're going for toward the big triangle. Now we are going to sew these together. <clears throat> and the way that we are going to do that is we are going to have one that goes big triangle facing down, big triangle facing up after we square these up. So these need to be squared up and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We are going to square these up. So to square up these little guys, there are diagonal angles running through these and they run differently. You're going to get your yielded too, so they're a little bit different, each one of them. Just as in where the color is placed and where that seam is, but don't worry, we're going to use that. We're squaring this down to two inches and so I'm trying to make sure that that diagonal line goes right through the center and that this one by one inch corner sits right in the center of everything. And then I'm just gonna cut off the excess. Again, we're squaring this to two by two. Okay, that looks a little funky, but we're gonna rotate it all the way around. And I'm gonna sit that one by one right there and that two by two angle here. So this is lined up with two, this is lined up with the two, that diagonal angle is going and the one inch is right here all together. And let's take that off and go across the top. And there we have a nice two by two square. So I just ran downstairs and look what just arrived from dolls and their girls from Etsy. I am obsessed. Uh, I love pin cushions and this one is just amazing. It comes with three pins here and I think this is going to be my new favorite. So do not be surprised if you see her sitting over here. I actually am trying to fight the urge to buy all like all the ones that she has. She's obviously a Tula lover and she's got some beautiful pin cushions with the focal images. Um, and I'm trying not to just have a bazillion of these, but it might happen. I might, it might happen. Anyway, back to what we're doing. We are going to now work with these. So I've got one that's facing down this way and I need another one that's facing up. So that one faces down. This one faces up. That's not what I need. <clears throat> Here's one. So what I'm trying to do is get one that faces down and one that faces up with the flying geese both pointed that direction. And we've got that. Now we're going to grab these little guys here. And one is going to go right there. And then we're going to sew all three of these together. Now we are going to take the 
what we've just sewn and I'm gonna press it this way and I'm gonna press everything going this way this direction toward this little additional solid square or rectangle And now that they all look like this, perfect, we are gonna grab these rectangles and sew them to the top of each of these. So it should look just like this, and then we're going to sew it. Make sure your geese are flying this away, this away. Now that we have sewn that rectangle to our little flying geese, we're gonna press this and press it up toward that that guy there. Ooh, so hot. <laughs> Again, put the rectangle facing up. And this way we've got the seam going up toward that rectangle. And you're going to finish that. So we're going to go grab that stack that we had before. And I'm going to grab four print squares and four solids. For your print squares, you are going to cut this in half again. This is just for your prints. And then I'm going to cut them off one more time. I'm gonna take a half an inch off the side. And now I have exactly what I need. And I stack these in stacks of two so I'm going to show you again, you will stack these, one on top of the other, and I'm going to cut it in half. Leave it just like that turn it and just take a half off the side. Now I have the rectangles the size that I need, right? Now for these backgrounds, there's four and you can stack them up and we just need to get um, four even squares like we did before. I am not being overly fussy about this. Cut in half, cut in half again. I wonder if I marked these before cutting if, huh, it's a thought. If I marked them prior to cutting, if I would have little, hmm. Let's see, let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. But 
because marking four is a whole lot, four lines is a whole lot faster than marking 16. But I don't know what I'm about to get and I'm not too concerned about it. <laughs> so we've got this like that. like we got action. Now we have all of the lines that we need. Cool. Now we need to make some flying geese units and these are the medium ones. Now after you finish those small ones the hard work is really done. So now I'm going to put a flying geese that is pointing towards the center and I'm going to sew on that line. Now that I've sewn on this line I'm just going to cut away the excess. So I'm putting the quarter inch line on that line and we are going to cut away these. Now that's a scrap for somebody. And then we're going to press this back, backward. So for this, now that we've sewn that and we've cut away the excess, we are just going to roll this back Then we are going to place another square and we're going to sew on the line that crosses that one just like that. Place that square right in that corner and we're going to sew on that line. Now we are going to, now that I've sewn that, I'm going to cut away that excess and put that to the side for someone. And we are going to do the same thing and press this backward. And now we have a flying geese unit and I'm going to do that to all of those. like we've done before and for this large one you're going to sew on either side of the diagonal line so not down the center but on either side I've chain stitched all these together so we're just going to break these apart now I'm going to cut them apart on the center line cut with courage guys I know this feels weird but just go for it and do that to all of your pieces. So I thought I was gonna use my slotted trimmer, but I don't have the right size. So we're gonna go with Old Faithful Block Lock. And I'm just making sure that I have extra fabric on either side. And if you have never seen me use this, you have not been on this channel, because this is my jam. Um, the slotted trimmers are cool and actually faster, but you got to find the size that works and that is not always easy and you have to have so many. 
with the block lock you can do I guess you can do many sizes with that too but either way it goes we are block locking it right now so I'm putting the block lock sign on the side without the hump and it locks into place and then I'm just making sure that this is more than what I need and it is and we'll cut that side and cut this side Flip it around, pull it down. And just trim them up. So we have our half square triangles. Now we are going to make them super cute and large and sew them together just like this. Big guy, big guy, so on and so forth. We need four. Now it's time to lay out this block. So we're going to grab our regular medium flying geese. And those need to be sewn to this, just like that. And then after that, we are going to sew this guy here. And this makes one block in the larger block of four, okay? So we're going to sew this to this first. Seam needs to be pressed toward the bottom. So we are going to press that puppy toward the bottom. Now we are going to put these two together. I'm gonna to do some pinning really quickly and make sure that the seams are nesting. So make sure that for your flying geese, I don't know if I said this before, that it goes toward the right. I have mine going towards the left. I need to fix all those. All right, so now I'm gonna take these and nest them and now they nest beautifully and I'm going to just do a little pinning here and sew this block together and then we'll duplicate this block four times and then sew the four ones together and then we'll have our block. So now that these are all sewn together, they say to press this to the left. So all of these need to be pressed to the left. Now that all these seams have been pressed to the left, we are going to put these two together and these two together and press them in opposite directions so that they nest. Now everything is sewn together and this is about the prettiest block you ever did see. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And so we need 16 of these and then I'm going to zhuzh the border a little bit, I think. And I feel good about this. I think it looks really good. Um, really good. So I finished sewing all the blocks together and together in the rows and the columns. So that's all done. Now I want to go on ahead and work on the inner border. The inner border is just this white part that's the background part that's going around. For that, I'm going to do some strips. I'm going to add, I'm going to just judge this a little bit. I'm going to add a decorative border too. And then we're going to do the big border. And here they have that big border. Here they have that big border in a print. I'm going to actually do it in the same background color. So it kind of waterfalls off. And I'm also going to bind it in the same background color. The only thing that I want to be, to have attention is the decorative strip that I'm going to add. I'll show you guys right now. Now that I have all my strips sewn, uh, not sewn, but now that I have them all cut, I am going to chop off the edge here. And then I am going to sew them together end to end. I'm not gonna sew them crosswise or anything like that. I'm just gonna sew them together 
end to end nothing special I'm just taking off the selvage edges here and then for the larger border I'm gonna use their same dimensions I'm not gonna change anything I'm just adding another decorative border to the outside of this one and I'm gonna cut that fabric a half an inch shorter a half an inch shorter this way then this is cut so right now we're just gonna take these and chop that off perfect and we'll sew it end to end nothing special or fancy just end to end sewing <laughs> 